What up, what up, what up? This is Astro Dim here doing the daily moon reading for you guys for September 2nd, 2018. Yay! Um, yeah. So, are you guys excited or no? <laughs> I am. Um, so yeah, let me, um, let's talk about this moon. So I'm gonna push this over to 12 o'clock a.m. September 2nd. It looks like that Taurus is in 27 degrees. Uh, excuse me, the moon is in 27 degrees, Taurus. Sorry about that. So that makes the moon in the third decant of Taurus. Um, that decant is the Saturn decant, Saturnian decant. So that's, um, you know, the third and final phase of Taurus. We understand what our desires and money and all the wants that we want um, emotionally. Um, we figured out, like, and we thought of certain plans that we can go by getting those desires, at least in our head, at least deep down inside, at least emotionally. And now what we're doing is um, being the initiator, being the practical initiator, which that's what Capricorn represents. It's carnal earth, right? And now we want to put these this shit into action to get it popping, you know what I mean? At least in the first half of the day. So... Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's see how this may apply to us. So again, I'm just going to use maybe a five degree orb in this case. Honestly, you know what I'm going to do and switch it up. I'm going to use a seven degree orb. So between um, 20 degrees and um, seven degrees, I'm going to see any aspects between there. Okay. Okay. So let's look, y'all. Actually, before I talk about aspects, let me talk about um, a little bit more about, or just one last note about um, Moon and Taurus in the third decade. So again, like I said, now we're trying or emotionally connecting to put in plans into action on, um, you know, that's connected to our desires and You know, we thought of like plans and how to get the desires. Now we want to put this shit into action. Um, You know, with with it being a Saturn decant too, like, you know, while we're putting things to action, we're learning about responsibility. We're learning about our certain restrictions and we're learning and experiencing major life lessons through this. Okay. And again, this may not be happening externally. This might be things that we are going through emotionally and internally and we're trying to maybe will ourselves or make ourselves understand a little bit more about how we should go about um, the things that we value and desire and how we should go about our self-worth in general too, okay? So now when it comes to our self-worth, when it comes to actual material possessions, we are pushing forward and trying to make shit happen, Okay. Um, another thing I would like to add to is that um, because this is a later degree Taurus, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how we're going to be having a Gemini moon for um, today, too. And so I'm going to get into that. But let's talk about um, the aspects that are happening while it's still... Um, a Taurus moon, okay? So, um, the first aspect that I actually see is the moon squaring Mercury. So, with the moon squaring Mercury, it's basically, we're thinking, um, our focus is more on, um, you know, building our, you know, self-expression, um, and just being self-expressive in general, um, like being self-expressive in our mind and through how we communicate, um, using our creativity to communicate the best way, um, and to just show what we feel. You know what I mean? Being like an entertainer, not necessarily dancing on stage, but 
being an entertainer and like um, creative expressing our emotions, creatively expression, expressing our thoughts. Okay, so um, that's definitely what's happening in the communicative side. But again, the moon is in Taurus in the beginning of the day. So there, there's going to be some discord here because deep down inside, we're not worried about being self-expressive. We're worrying about, okay, but what will give me the most worth? What will give me the most worth emotionally and financially? How can I build myself out of this? Will me expressing myself hinder me in some ways? You know, that's why, like, if people don't notice, sometimes tourists are really quiet it's because they're thinking these things and that's why Taurus and Leo actually um square there so there's something to think about for sure next thing I see is um you know there is I'll talk about this um there's a slight inconjunct between the moon and Venus um that I feel like we need to talk about because they're both Venusian. Um, you know, our desires are actually really connected to partnership, com- compatibility, relating to people, having a meaning, meaning of the minds, really picking the brains of others that we love and respect and appreciate, um, which is fine. You know, pairing up and kind of coming together and sharing thoughts and seeing what resonates what's best for us is a great thing. It's a good thing to desire, a good thing to want. But deep down inside, again, is it where our emotions are thinking, is this worthy? Should we be doing this? Is this going to give me money, though? <laughs> Beginning of the day, we're actually thinking this way. It sounds fucked up, but it's the truth, okay? So, you know, it's something that you need to consider. Um, next thing I see is that Saturn is actually in conjunct Taurus. Saturn is in Capricorn, but it's an early Capricorn while the moon is in late Taurus. So that's why it's actually in conjunct. Um, before we were having a connection with Saturn, um, kind of understanding that we have to take our authority to get the reputation and the status that we dream of and the career that we dream of and have to take an initiative. Um, and we kind of would want to be reserved with it, though, and really internalize this energy um, and kind of rev ourselves up. So when it's Saturn is not retrograde no more, we can just hit the ground running. OK, um, but again, there's a little bit of discord, not only because of the retrograde, um, you know, the Taurus moves fast and, you know, that energy and our emotions move fast. So, again, we're still thinking Is this worthy emotionally? Is this going to make me money? Is this going to be helpful for me on an emotional level? Like, is this going to make me happy? It's a big, big disagreement there. Also, with, you know, Saturn being so close to Sag, there is some Sag energy there, too, in which passions kind of run real quick. And, um... You know, you might be really into something one, you know, about a month ago, but now the passions are running low and you're not that interested anymore. So now you kind of want to take authority in a different way. So there may be some of that energy happening. Um, And with not only it being a Taurus moon, but in Saturn, you know, which Saturn is a slow moving energy is causing some some shakiness there for sure but with inconjuncts they're not as tough as opposites or squares there's just a slight disagreement grants and you don't really get it until later on in the game you know what i mean until the end of the day probably you won't really get it so something to definitely think about and consider um but there is a trine between the moon and mars You know, especially with the moon now not being retrograde, excuse me, the Mars not being retrograde anymore, you know, there's an agreeance on, okay, I understand what I want. I want to hit the ground running with the moon and Mars is all about being driven and pushing forward and 
going with with something that they kind of really took in deeply and you know with Mars too uh, Mars is going to be in a Virgo decant which again is all about organizing and making sure things are good but at the same time not letting the organization spot really stop it um, or the organization energy really stop it from actually still being motivated and determined to push forward with something so it's happening simultaneously and that's what the moon wants that's what the moon is feeling um so yeah that's that's the that's the interesting part of this pairing but it's working really good it's like doing multiple things simultaneously and that's the energy that i'm catching here okay so that's with this um you know when the moon is in taurus but if we go um you know say 12 o'clock p.m my time in eastern standard time in the u.s you know the moon's going to be in four degrees gemini and i feel like that's something to mention because for a lot of us you know we're going to be noticing it's going to be waking hours while it's waking hours it's going to be in gemini so i definitely want to speak on that okay so uh, again four degrees gemini the first decade of gemini so we're all going to be trying to soak up information that we're learning that will help build us and satisfy us emotionally um to emotionally satisfy us for sure so it doesn't have to be like a uh, chicken soup for the soul this makes me feel happy or i have something to address emotionally and i need to get to it but just whatever the um, knowledge that we get if does it satisfy us does it make us happy you know what i mean it could be something like i just found out my great 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 grandfather's name right is that really connected to emotion kind of but it may make you feel real good so it's kind of stuff like that okay um really um you know learning and using your mind and like reflecting on your thinking processes and how you communicate is really really strong with this moon uh, we're definitely communicating our emotions but more in a logical way um and honestly you know we are doing that but what we're doing the most is getting information from others instead of sharing our information because remember we're talking about gemini here <laughs> gemini ain't expressing their emotions that much you know what i mean but if they do though it's in a logical way and we're learning through speaking and communicating with others and we're kind of processing that information is real real dope so let's kind of talk about the aspects here um well actually let me talk about this decant real quick um I actually already spoke on it, but this is in the Mercury decant of Gemini. So again, the intelligence level, the thinking, the reflecting, the learnings and communicating part of us is really, really strong, really, really, really strong. So it's a positive and um, great energy to have if you want to reach out to somebody and to be um to reach out to someone but more in a in a more logical and intelligent way it's a good day to express that energy for sure okay but yeah let's um talk about these aspects so the moon is actually going to be sextile north node and so again uh where yes we're lo we're learning yes we're communicating um yes we it's it's making us feel good it's really connecting to our emotional passions um but the lovely thing about it too is that it is pushing us more towards our life path now we may not all be north node leos but this north node currently in leo is telling us when it comes to whatever our natal north node is we need to use this energy to learn about the self-expression part of our north node so you can have say um, a north node that has nothing to do with self-expression but you need to be self-expressive in general in your north node so this is teaching us specifically to be more creative and self-expressive when it comes to our life path and how to do it so with us communicating with others and reflecting on our thinking processes and really um, trying to build on intelligence 
it's pushing us more towards our north node and it's going to give us that emotional satisfaction which is great right we all want that <laughs> so that's lovely um also the moon is going to be square um the sun and so you know the sun is more focused on organization part of mercury and the um daily routines the um process and procedures work environment the things that we do at a frequency you know what i mean kind of being a little bit more detailed oriented and focused on um, a particular thing um, and then being more mutable when it comes to that particular thing being mutable in the sense of making changes to that one particular thing while gemini is a little bit different gemini is about um thinking and um communicating and community in general but the thing is is that they are not as focused as virgos um they think go from idea to idea to idea and they communicate with one person commu communicate with another person communicate with another person and so um you know the there's going to be a difference you know emotionally you're um, not going to want to be too focused you want to be able to have the full reign to choose what you want to focus on communicate what you want to communicate on really dig in what you want to dig in with but um you know with the sun being here what you identify with with how you react you're gonna want to focus on something and then be mutable within that focus do you get what i'm saying um being flexible within that focus so there's a little bit of discord there um you emotionally want to be free but you feel like you need to react in a certain way um to be a little bit more focused um I'm organized and routine you know what i'm saying and gemini's hate routine so <laughs> um and that's how we're feeling emotionally okay um now this is um a great aspect that's happening here where the moon is going to be sextile chiron lovely 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 so with that energy um it's great um you know this chiron is um, retrograde so we're, we're quite internal with this in um, energy but we are reflecting on childhood traumas as connected to our personality persona um our appearance and how we were ridiculed or made fun of or uh, made um, to feel unmotivated by these things um and so uh with the moon being here and in gemini we are reflecting on our emotions but in a more logical way and having a greater understanding on why we went through those things, how those things made us feel, how can we get um, let these things go and get out of um, being so um, self-loathing when it comes to you know those traumas, how to address them and let them go to learn from them. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it's interesting because um, you know it's sextile, so these energies are different but they get each other and they're open to learn from each other there's not no power um struggles here they're open to learn from each other and so it's uh, a really really positive energy to have with um chiron for sure so good healing energy in a logical way when passion meets logic it is it's lovely okay um so yeah that's what's gonna happen in September 2nd, this was a longer one because, you know, there was, um, the moon was switching signs. I, I definitely didn't want to, um, lose one aspect of the movement of the moon. Okay. So I had to talk about both of them, right? So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, or anything like that. Um, feel free to comment below and I hope you like it. Okay. Peace.